Hey, what's up, everybody? It is Monday, March 14th. I sent out the new issue of MMT Trader. If you want to get a copy of that, go to my website, pitbulleconomics.com. Sign up for a 30 day free trial. So, NASDAQ in a bear market. Yeah, that's what the headlines were saying today. So, uh, that's not a bear market. I'm not saying it may not develop into one, and I'm, I'm going to talk about that, but you know, a magnitude of point decline or a percentage point decline to label it a bear market is silly. A bear market is a condition of the market. It is a condition of the economy where there is no growth or contraction or, or stagnation in growth and it lasts for a long time. Now, maybe this is going to develop into a real bear market. I mean, we have some issues, the biggest of which is this war and the sanctions and the potential blowback from the sanctions. It's not only going to impact Russia, and we see a very significant impact over there, but again, I'm going to talk about this. But just to label something a bear market because of a certain magnitude decline, a certain percentage decline, that's just silly, that's just arbitrary. A bear market is a condition of the market, it is a, it is a condition of the economy and, and a simple point decline or percentage decline, that doesn't say anything necessarily about a condition. I mean, I was there in 1987 when we had that, you know, stock market crash and that, the Dow was down 22 points, 22 percent in one day. 22 percent in one day. So, and that was not a bear market. That was, you know, something basically technical in nature. Um, and it, it did not whatsoever represent some kind of a, you know, negative condition of the economy. Not at all. So you got to keep that in mind. But the media loves to, you know, compartmentalize things and, and, you know, just label everything. And because that that's just better sound bites, man, you know? So here's the thing. It's very hard to quantify the impact of the sanctions. The war obviously is a horrible, terrible thing and we're all hoping it ends soon and there's going to be peace. And the problem with the war is we've seen this kind of constant e escalation. You know, the, over the weekend there was a report that uh, a Russian missile or bomb landed close to the NATO border, I mean close to the Polish border, and right away uh, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan was out there today said we're going to defend every inch of NATO territory and when we say inch we mean inch so you know ratcheting up the rhetoric once again and and I don't have to remind you that we're dealing with two nuclear superpowers but let's talk about the economics first of all sanctions are very hard to quantify in terms of the actual impact I mean these things are, are, are ongoing they're in a state of flux they just you know uh, basically uh, got applied recently and the natural behavior is that countries, whoever is sanctioned or whoever is feeling the blowback of sanctions is going to try to find a workaround and again that's hard to quantify. I mean Russia now establishing local currency trade, ruble, yuan with China, local currency trade with uh, other trading partners um, this kind of thing in the United States now, you know, Biden's talking to Venezuela about getting crude. He's trying to get this uh, Iran JCPOA deal approved. So, I mean, there's a reaction. It, you know, it, it's like uh, it's like a fight. It's like a boxing match. I mean, you know, a punch gets thrown, you faint, you throw another, you know, you, you, you parry or you, uh, you know, you counter punch. I mean, that's what it is. So it's, it's very hard to quantify. Now, I'll take a stab at it, okay? One of the things that is very important 
to understand is that the banking system, you know, finance, we're talking about finance right now. This is separate from the fiscal flows, but of course I'll get into that. But finance drives so many things. It drives trade, it drives commerce, okay? And the banks are price setters in the degree that they finance commercial activity, okay? The price at which they set a loan is dependent upon their valuation of assets, etc. And what we have seen recently um, has been a decline in bank capital, bank residual. Residual is the assets minus the liabilities, essentially the net worth of a bank, banking system. This, this uh, information, this, this data comes out every week at Friday. The Fed puts it out in its H.8 release. And what we have seen from, um, let's see, the peak was July, I believe it was July 2021, until January 2022, there was a $157 billion decline in that residual, okay, net worth of banks, the, in the, the, the banking system, the commercial banking system. Now, when you take that $157 billion and you consider the fact that these, the leverage ratio, the supplemental leverage ratio has to be at least 3%, how do you calculate that? You take bank capital divided by consolidated assets, total assets, right? Now, if you take that 3%, if you take $157 billion, and you divide it by 3%, 0.03, you basically come out with $5 trillion, okay? That's the amount of asset uh, constraint or loss, potential asset loss that is represented in that $157 billion decline in residual. $5 trillion is a lot. Now, I'll give you a comparison. We saw in the, in, when the pandemic hit in 2020, in April 2020, and then everything got shut down, right? Got shut down in March. And from April through August of 2020, when we had the shutdown, the whole economy was shut down. We saw a loss in that residual of $174 billion. So it was more than what we saw now. But right now, the market, or I should say the banking system, is pricing in a loss of potential asset accumulation of $5 trillion. It's, almost, it's very comparable to what was priced in in the COVID situation at the worst part of the COVID situation when everything was shut down. You follow me so far? Now, I think that is a very significant discounting of the situation. I think it's big, a big discounting of the situation. Now, obviously, the war could get worse. If NATO gets involved, I mean, we're not even going to be thinking about the stock market at that point. But I think that $157 billion decline in bank residual, I mean, to me... That discounts a whole lot of where we are right now in terms of the markdown that banks have taken, all right? And again, that markdown comes as a result of the markdown in their assets. Like, okay, you got loans, right? You got other assets, securities, and everything that just happened with these sanctions and everything, you just took a hit basically of like five trillion. All right, that's what's represented in that 157 billion. Again, you gotta have, if you're if you're going with a minimum of a three percent um, leverage ratio, that's a minimum. And remember, most banks keep the leverage ratio much higher, like six or seven or eight percent. I mean, then you're really talking about massive. This was a massive hit. But it's comparable to what we saw in the pandemic, in the worst period of the pandemic, when the economy was really shut down, when we had the shutdowns, when everything was closed, remember? 
So I think a lot of this is discounted. You know, we're going to get an interest rate hike on Wednesday. Uh, 25 basis points most likely is what the market is. Uh, Fed fund futures are pricing in. You know, we might sell off a little bit more if the Fed goes more than 25. You know, we might sell off again. But I, I think, I don't know, to me, $5 trillion, that that's a big haircut. You know, again, if the war keeps raging on, if NATO gets involved, but that is, that is, you know, that's something very hard to quantify. I mean, you can sit on the sidelines with cash right now, okay? You may end up missing one of the greatest buying opportunities in the last, you know, I don't know how many years, but, um, you know, you're sitting on the sidelines with cash. There's a war going on. I understand that. I totally understand that. But again, I'm coming to you here, I'm trying to explain this to you in a way where we could quantify what is going on, at least, you know, to some degree, at least have a ballpark idea. Because otherwise, we're just flip-flopping around with the headlines and everything looks really, really scary and we, you know, we're trying to figure out what is the impact of these sanctions. And right now, I'm saying it's roughly equal to the, a little bit less than the worst period of the pandemic. Now, I could be way off on this. It could get way, way worse. But like I said, there's a reaction. There's a behavioral reaction to the sanctions that countries, uh, firms, commercial entities, individuals, they try to find a workaround. So even though you have these, these, these draconian sanctions, it doesn't mean that, you know, it's 100% ironclad, you know, uh, uh, that they can't be circumvented in some way. I mean, look, we check out the sanctions that have been on Iran. I mean, they've still been selling oil, Venezuela, things like that. So that's what I want to tell you today. I think a lot of this has been discounted. I could be completely wrong, but I mean, that is my kind of back of the envelope calculation. Do with it as you will, <laughs> as they say. All right, everybody, that's it for today. Hope you uh, appreciated that. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.